Hello grade 12s, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Priscilla Sanelani, you may simply call me Priscilla and in this grade 12 mathematical literacy video we are literally preparing for an exam that is coming this coming Friday which is the 16th of May. So in this video what we are going to do is we are going to go through some finishing touches and last minute touch ups of the things that you need to study. Unfortunately, this is a reality of some of the students. Most of you have not been studying this whole time. The last time you thought about mathematical literacy was the day that you were registering and now that date has come. It seemed like it was too far back then, but now it has come and I know that some of you, the truth of the matter is you haven't been studying, you haven't caught up and now you are left with only a few days for you to be able to cover specifically only two days so what this video serves to do is to give you some of the last minute things that you can touch up or look into to make sure that you master what's going to appear on that question paper we have already done a scope for your paper one it, i'm going to link it somewhere here make sure that you go watch it if you haven't watched it but if you have watched the scope and the time that you watched the scope was like literally today and you're realizing that of all of the scope there is so much that you haven't done what can you do to maximize the time that is left that's what this video is for but before we get started, let's get some admin things out of the way. In the comment section of this video is where you go if you have any questions. Now, I do say because I said this with the preparation for your English paper and people started sending questions at 10 p.m. the night before. When you send a question 10 p.m. the night before, you're not leaving me much room to work with you at that point. Also, at that time, I'm dealing with my one-on-one -on -one students who are like blowing up my WhatsApp, looking for help because they're panicking in the last minute. So I might not be able to reach you. So the sooner you leave your comments in the comment section below, the sooner I can get back to you. So as you are watching this video, make sure that you leave your questions in the comment section below if you need help with them and also do your friends some favors by alerting them to this video because they may not know when only find it at 10 p.m the night before the examination and at that point there's not really much i can do i know how to help students study at the last minute and maximize the last two days but i cannot maximize like the last two hours of your time like i I am sorry, I don't want to set us up both for failure, right? So make sure that you leave your comments in the comment section below as soon as possible with anything that you are uncomfortable with. And speaking of my one-on-one -on -one students, if you also want to set up your one-on-one -on -one sessions, there's an email that I'm going to place here right on the screen. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is make sure that you shoot me an email and we can set you up for your one-on-one. -on -one. I we study and we make sure that you prepare, we prepare you for that examination room. The only problem we are going to have is if you email me at 12 o'clock the night before. At that point, I might not even see your email until the morning of. So anyway, let me not get into scolding you because the damage is already done. Let's get into preparing you for your last minute touch-ups for your upcoming examination on the 16th of May, which is two days from today. Now, if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video or this subject in general, we have a visual program that can help you with just that. From anywhere in the country, all you need is an email and a WhatsApp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee. This will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with. This will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel. For example, ch subjects like history. You will soon see our full subject list. We will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together. But what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have 
even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your prize quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot let's first start with what you need to prioritize studying under each topic to maximize the time that is left as you know from our scope finance is one of the main topics of paper one and if you haven't been studying finance i would encourage you that to use most of your time studying questions on finance but if you were wondering what to prioritize what i think you should prioritize is taxable income and tariff systems these two topics hold the most amount of marks and they're the ones that are going to be most tricky in the examination room if you haven't studied them so start with taxable income prioritize taxable income know how to determine a tax bracket that a person falls under and once you know how to determine that tax bracket know how to use the calculation to calculate their taxable income and then from there also make sure that you understand how to use rebates and subtract them from their overall taxable income then also prioritize tariff systems water tariffs electricity tariffs are the ones that are most common when it comes to uh, uh, tariff systems and they are the ones that are most tricky so make sure that you take your time to go study tariff system there is a video on tariff systems on this channel watch that video on repeat until you understand what we are doing also make use of other full question papers that we have done because in them you will find even more examples of tariff systems so taxable income and tariff systems are one of those two topics that you should hold in high standard now it doesn't mean they are going to be the only ones but i'm saying to you that if you haven't been studying or you have a knowledge gap in your studying because you know how much of studying you have been doing and if it was sufficient or not i'm saying prioritize those two topics under finance then when you get to data handling the first thing that i want you to prioritize will be the box and whisker plot or the box and whisker diagram the box and whisker diagram when you study just the box and whisker diagram it teaches you about the maximum and the minimum it teaches you about the range because if you're looking at minimum and maximum you are going to know know how to calculate the range and then as well it also teaches you how to determine a median and then it also covers interquartile range because you know that in a box and whisker plot you have a q3 and a q1 and when you subtract them from each other that gives you an interquartile range so you can see that when you study a box and whisker plot you are covering quite a number of things that can come up and they also like to put it as a question of interpretation they can give you two boskin whisker plots and ask you questions about them so know how to interpret a boskin whisker plot and how to use it to determine the median the interquartile range as well as the range itself then the other thing in data handling that i think you should prioritize is calculating the mean if you know how to calculate the mean you know that a mean has a formula but there is a way that these days they like to test that formula in a way where instead of calculating the mean you're calculating one of the factors in the formula so you need to be able to determine let's say the number of uh, items on the data that you have been given 
by using a mean and a mean formula. So you need to be able to turn around upside down and still be able to use it. Then the third, there is going to be a pr probabilities as a topic in your paper one. Actually, probabilities goes both into paper one and paper two. A tree diagram will most likely appear in paper two, just like we did in the full question paper of paper two that we just did. It will be the last video right before this one. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it before you write your paper two. So I'm not anticipating that there will be a tree diagram when it comes to probabilities in your paper one. However, you need to be able to calculate a probability of an event. When they ask you, what is the probability of something taking place? Do you know how to do that? That is the favorable outcome all over the total outcomes that are presented. That's what we call a probability of an event. If you are not comfortable with that, go make sure you watch previous videos for you to be able to know how we determine a probability. The other thing with the probability is that you need to be able to write it in different formats. There's four different ways you can write a probability. The answer can be required as a decimal or as a fraction as a percentage or simply in words know how to give your answer in all four of those formats so if the probability of something is 100 there's a hundred percent chance of that thing happening as a decimal that would be 1.0 as a fraction that can be a one over one as a percentage that's hundred percent in words you will say there's it's certain or you will use the word definite so things like that make sure that you do cover them then lastly you know that we also have some basic maths that is going to be in integrated into your questions in question one of your paper there will actually be a standalone topic but when it comes to basic maths the things that i think that you should go prioritize is ratios get comfortable with how to calculate ratios how to simplify ratios how to determine a ratio of something how to write a ratio in ratio form. i wouldn't take it for granted that all of you do know how to write ratios in ratio format or to give a ratio over something so if that's something you're not comfortable with go make sure that you get comfortable with that and then the second thing is percentages first of all know how to calculate a percentage or to turn something into a percentage know how to convert into a percentage but most importantly know how to calculate a percentage increase in something there is a formula to do that so make sure that you go learn how to calculate a percentage increase of literally anything they could ask you this question about a population or about profit so know how to calculate a percentage increase from one year to the other then lastly with basic math make sure that you know how to round off rounding off to two decimal places three decimal places and even rounding off to a whole number or to the nearest 1000 or 10,000. get comfortable with rounding off Next, we are going to look at how our question paper is going to be laid out. So when you open it, this is what you can expect. First and foremost, you can expect to have four to five questions in your question paper. Depending on the province you're on, most likely there will be five questions. However, the format and the layout of them will be pretty much the same. In question one, you should expect to find basic math questions in our scope we call these ones the 20 percent level one questions they are the exact same thing if you are curious as to how they look like again we have done a paper one question in this channel so go make sure that you look at that full paper one video and it will give you a good indication of what you can expect under the basic math questions or for your question one rather then in question two question two is going to be where you meet your finance so it's going to be very heavy on finances and this is where now you can expect to find your question of taxable income and your tariff systems to lie so make sure that if that's the question that you are comfortable with or the question that you struggle with you can then strategize as to whether you will start with that one or end with that one then in question three that's where you can expect data handling this data handling is where now you will expect to find your bosk and whisker plots and uh the calculation of your mean so it's going to be very heavy on data handling and everything else that pertains to data handling then in question four and five question four and five is what we call integrated questions there will be a mix of finances 
data handling and then in the mix of that finances and data handling they will also include probability so when we are looking at the topic of probability it doesn't stand alone as its own question like the rest of them do the way that financing finances and data handling do but probability is integrated into other questions so for example it could be a question on data handling and it will include probability and finances for both question four and question five so both of them you can expect them to be mixed if your question paper ends with question four then expect that question four will be the one that is going to be mixed otherwise this completes what you need to study for your exam I have YouTube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below.